and welcome back to Girl Chat Sports. We're on episode 49. I am here with my lovely co-host, Miss Stephanie Swash. present. What's up? So later on this um, podcast, uh, our second half is we are joined with the ladies of minorities in sports, Miss Shina and Miss Candace. They are repping from the East Coast, so we kept them up a little bit past their bedtime, I'm sure. Um, but we can't hear to hear. Can't wait to hear all of what they have to say, kind of about um, the business, minorities in sports, their group, as well as a little bit of the New York and the East Coast um, sports stuff that are happening lately in in the world. But here in Vegas is what's important right now, Steph. Man, we had the uh, draft happen, the expansion draft happen. So officially, Las Vegas, we have the Golden Knights. They are an official team. There's about 30 of them that we had through the expansion draft, which was last week on Wednesday, where we got to pick from different teams. And of those teams that wanted to keep their players, they would trade with us, you know, draft picks, which we got to then use on Friday during the draft, which was cool. And then there was another draft, I think, on Saturday with, like, some of, like, the up-and-coming um, hockey players that maybe won't play this season for the actual team but are, like, on a practice team, I guess. You, you know, putting it in football terms, it's like the practice team or the farm team for your hockey squad. So they're out here. They actually had a first scrimmage yesterday in Las Vegas, so that was pretty cool. We're excited for them. We picked up a kick-ass goalie. We picked up a champion goalie from the Pittsburgh Penguins. Yeah, Flurry, bring it on. Hey, we're, that could be my new jersey. I might have to get like a Golden Knights jersey with Flurry. It's oh, S. but you could also get Derek England jersey. He's actually a former Las Vegas Wrangler and played oh, for us right. a while. He's uh, got an off-season home here because he met his wife while playing for the Wranglers out here. Aww. I wonder if it was that strip club. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, in other Vegas sports news, Mr. Derek Carr signs a five-year $125 million contract. That's literally $25 million a year. And it guarantees him that he will be here in Las Vegas, you guys, because, you know, they're not coming until 2020. So we definitely will be seeing him, not so much Marshawn, unless he's in the stands or the sidelines, but Derek will be on the field for the Raiders, the Las and Vegas besides Raiders. besides his family, his church is very happy to hear of this because he's been tithing at his church since he was in college. So Yo. they will be receiving a cut. They... Listen, that pastor got money right now. I'm and just how saying. sweet is this that when they asked Eric Carr what he was going to spend his first little bit of money on, he said Chick fil A. A man of my dreams. <laughs> Do you guys hear that? And spoiling his wife. <sighs> man, where are the Derek Cars in this world? Does he have any brothers? <laughs> Single brothers? Over six feet, you know, love dogs. <laughs> <laughs> it's not too much to ask. <laughs> Is loving dogs too much to ask, really? <laughs> oh, Lord. And in other news, the McGregor-Mayweather fights on, as we stated in our last podcast. Yeah, August 26th. There's a $10 million asking price for the title sponsor of the fight. Holy this cow. is literally nearly double the largest single fight sponsorship. It was $5.6 million that Takate uh, paid for the Pacquiao-Mayweather fight. I wonder who's going to shell out for this one. Well, they said that the sponsoring company uh, will get its logo at the center of the ring um, at T-Mobile, uh, branding on the ring girls, uh, two of the ropes in and in two of the non-fighter corners in the ring. Basically, their product's going to be everywhere, but still yeah. $10 million. And who knows how long that fight's going to last. And $500,000 worth of tickets. Oh, hey. Well, hope, maybe Zappos can do it. Yes, we need to <laughs> ask Zappos to do that. Um, and so last little Las Vegas sports tidbit. UNLV Running Rebels has a new logo, and it's not really a rebel, nor is it running. <laughs> Can I tell you, we're in Las Vegas. This is a huge tech industry out here, too. A lot of startups, entrepreneurs, a lot of kids in college that have graphic design knowledge. And the logo for the UNLV Railbills, I saw some guy on a post comment. It looks like a rock with a hat on it. <laughs> rock with a hat. <laughs> rock with a hat on it. They said that they were trying to incorporate more, like, Vegas things to it, like the Welcome to Fabulous Las Vegas sign. Uh, instead of Hey Reb's Feather, it's that little star that's sort of synonymous of Las Vegas. But here's Vegas. the deal. When you look at it from afar, all it looks like is a blob with a hat on. 
Those are mountains <laughs> to further tie in Southern Nevada. Do they put a construction cone on it, too? Because that would further tie in Las Vegas. I don't know. I think it's kind of sleek looking. That in a sun, because you know we've had like 110 plus degree weather for like the last 15 days here. It's ridiculous, but beyond the point. So there's not a whole lot to talk about in regards to the NFL, except for Zeke Elliott being half naked or fully naked on the 2017 ESPN he body issue. a hairy beast. A little manscaping wouldn't be bad for Ezekiel <laughs> Elliott. He is a good-looking guy, but I'm sure there he is was quite happy some hair. to show off more than just his abs. <laughs> yeah, and hold on to a couple boobs. Um, and so, yeah, not much in NFL. We'll get back to them, um, you know, next next podcast. Although Tom Brady, of course, is the first player to be twice voted number one by his peers on NFL's <laughs> network's annual top 100 list. Is anybody else sick of hearing about Tom Brady? I am. <laughs> I'm sick of hearing about Tom Brady. Tell us how you really feel. Give me my championship ring back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but seriously, though. Um, other things that have happened, not too much to report about Major League Baseball other than it's happening. <laughs> Tim Tebow stays relevant. Tim Tebow stays relevant. He got promoted. I want to say it's still a farm team. I'm not sure if there's a difference between double A AA or triple A, but he's still not on the actual Mets team yet. It has less to do with baseball and more to do with selling tickets. But he hit a home run today. Like a for real legit home run. Not like a just a little bend or got on base. He hit a home run. <laughs> the gods were watching and took care of him. Yeah, his God. <laughs> his God, his God. Um, other than that, he has nothing in comparison to this guy, Aaron Judge, for the Yankees. This man, who we've talked about before, is the size of J.J. Watt, but is hitting record record home runs in practice and in games. He had a 496-foot blast um, in one of his games, and then he hit a 500-foot blast during practice over the weekend. This man is, like, magical. He is, like, the unicorn of baseball. <laughs> He's man, he's he's manly, but he literally I've never seen a guy hit a ball like this. Like he's ridiculous. He has power unbeknownst to anyone else that we know. So congrats to Aaron Judge. He's also pretty hot. So ladies, look out for him on the Yankees. Um, other than that, we got basketball to talk about. A lot happened in this last week or so. Draft took place. My boy Markel Fultz from the University of Washington. He went first to the Philly 76ers. So the balls happened. <laughs> The balls have the balls got booed out of the draft. <laughs> of course, we're talking about Lavar Ball, his son Lonzo Ball, drafted second by, of course, the Lakers, and they were already prepared with their purple and gold. They got purple and gold big baller brand hats. They got the shoes that Lonzo's gonna wear on the court when it comes to game time, all that stuff, and they're probably like three thousand dollars. So whatever. Just kidding. <laughs> I'll res- do respect, and I-, I love Lonzo Ball, and I hope he does well because he definitely is going to need it after all the hype that his dad has put up. I love the fact that there's a man in his chi- children's lives who is supporting them unconditionally. I just need less mouth. And they shouldn't quit their day jobs because WWE just doesn't work. And did you catch him on the WWE? <laughs> did you see him with the waggly arms running down to the <laughs> ring, sliding in, not being able to get all the way in, turning over, taking his shirt off? No, LeVar, we don't want to see your body. <laughs> Save that for your wife. Keep it at home in Chino Hills, and we'll be good. So the draft happened. Um, there's a lot of free agency stuff that's been happening today. Not only did we, we're going to talk about the Yank, uh, we're going to talk about the uh, Nick Slater and Phil Jackson, but CP3. another thing, the Clippers, man. I don't know what to. <laughs> I feel bad because as a Laker hater, I gotta love the Clippers. But not only is Blake Griffin opting out of his contract and entering into free agency, but CP3 did the same thing about a week ago, and today he was traded to the Rockets. Man. James Harden, Mr. Beard himself, and CP3 at it. I don't know what I, one of the stats that I read, which you know I don't do stats too well, is that um, they were two of the top 11 people in regards to like time with the ball. So they're curious to know how those two together will be playing. But Rockets manage to believe that it's going to happen. They're going to be great together. So we'll see how it goes. And the Clippers still stay irrelevant. Hey, the Clippers still have DeAndre Jordan and that <laughs> meme, which is like DeAndre Jordan at home, like, 
where am I going to do? It's just me. <laughs> They'll get somebody. Just relax. Um, the NBA Awards also were on this past um, Sunday. It was an amazing show. First of all, Drake hosted it. I didn't think Drake was that great of an entertainer. And, well, okay, rapping, yes. But as, like, an award show MC, yeah, no. a host, I didn't think anything of it. But it this annoying. man did – I thought he did great. I thought he was annoying. <laughs> he had some really great chip shots, like, about how the Brooklyn Nets were trying to get blue, blue check for Instagram and you know AI was there just to be chilling casually with his homies and I mean there was some you know Paul Pierce they didn't think he actually retired because they should have been gone 10 years ago I mean there was a lot of funny things the that I like awkward liked. Draymond Green post the Draymond Green <laughs> podcast that he thought was terrible I mean then, then there was the skit with Will Ferrell that we'd post on our Instagram which was about um, DeAndre or I'm sorry DeMar Rose and he was like DeMar 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 I say it DeMar it ain't you know it was just hilarious I thought it was funny I didn't understand why Nicki Minaj was there. I don't understand the correlation there. But it was the very first NBA Awards. Um, Of course, you know by now that the MVP was, of course, Russell Westbrook, who was I mean, well-deserved. Finally, they get it right. This guy, I think, what was it? He had averaged 42 triple-doubles in a single season. How can you not? He he even got a shout-out from his boy, KD. He got a shout-out from Taylor Swift. Again, why is that even... In the picture, I don't know. Maybe Taylor needed five five seconds of fame. Um, Rookie of the year was Malcolm uh, Brogdon from the Bucks. Sixth Man Award went to Eric Gordon from the Rockets. Giannis, the long last name that I can never pronounce, <laughs> was <laughs> the Bucks' most improved uh, player for the NBA. Um, Mike D'Antonio um, got Coach of the Year, um, and then Defensive Player Draymond Green. Er, so. Yeah. And how sad was the Monty Williams <gasps> speech? Oh my, so the Sager Strong Award, the very first one, took place at the award. And it's so cute. They have like this cute, crazy, colorful jacket that they place on the person. And this year's um, recipient was uh, Monty, Williams. Monty Williams. And this is the guy who lost his wife in a freak car accident last year. Left him and his five children, you know, widowed. Um, and in the um, in his speech during the funeral last year, he basically said that he forgave you know the kids that, or the people that had had the accident with him. That you know he will be living on. And you know, it, here's the deal: I could not be that big of a person. My husband and dies, and I've got five kids, and I'm by myself, and this is a freak accident. Like I am upset, and you know, God willing or not, like I'm just. I don't know how he can do it. Yeah, and I mean, he continuously thinks of the other family as well. So, So, I mean, the biggest heart in the world, our hearts are out to you, and we appreciate um, all that you do. So, that was awesome. We really enjoyed that. I enjoyed the NBA Awards probably more than the initial big three. Ooh. We love meeting these guys for the draft, you guys, but they played the game on Sunday. It aired on Monday. Why? I mean, it Fox doesn't even Sports make one. it exciting. Why? Like, people are going to know what happened and not really want to watch. And three hours, the first two games, just, you know, anyways. We'll talk about that a little bit later with our guests because um, one of them was there at it live. So we got to kind of we get to kind of hear the live versus the recorded version that I got to see. Um, but I'm hopeful that the big three will kind of work the kinks out. And by the time I get to see them later on, maybe they're in Seattle for the playoffs or here in Vegas for the live championship game. It'll be a little bit better. So other than that, not a whole lot else going on. The WNBA, I didn't realize this. The San Antonio Stars, where my girl had, um, Kelsey Plum went to, they're 0-14. and 14. Oh. <laughs> not that that's any better than where the Seattle Storm are. The Seattle Storm won six games, I think. But anyways, the two leaders, um, the Washington Mystics, Minnesota Lynx. Lynx finally lost a game. They were undefeated, and on Saturday they lost to the Suns. But um, other than that, Brittany Griner stuns the crowd with a one-handed dunk. Um, during Mercury's win over the storm, of course, against Seattle. But it was pretty amazing. It's it's always nice to see a woman dunk, you know. It kind of yeah. gives everybody like a, yeah, that's my girl. So yeah. congrats to you, Brittany. Um, in some ooh and ah moments, um, you know, there was a, a, a press conference that Randy Moss um, had to – talked about this is like literally almost two weeks ago right after our last podcast and he talked about how much he missed dennis green and what dennis green meant to him and i want to tell you randy moss was like in i mean i was almost in tears and of course i cry easily but that's not irrelevant so you know that was interesting also um shout out to the tennessee titans and logan ryan who paid off his brother's eighty two thousand dollar student loan debt oh i love that that's what they're supposed to do for big heart in some ah uh, or ooh, what you got, Steph? 
Well, Charlie Sheen must be broke. <laughs> <laughs> or doing more drugs. <laughs> he needs money for that. <laughs> but he's actually selling his uh, Babe Ruth's 2000, or excuse me, 1927 World Series ring that he said has just been on display in his home. He wanted somebody else to have it. But this ring has already gotten bids up to, I think, three or four hundred or $600,000, I think, last uh, as what I heard this morning, which is a great price. But what? who sells that? That's not something you pass down to your kids. Right. You know, so clearly Charlie might need, need to make his mortgage payment or something. Who knows? <laughs> I don't know. Um, another O moment. We came out, I think, yesterday or today, but Clinton Pornis, former, former running back from the Washington Redskins, who I l- loved, um, he admits to actually contemplating killing, like literally sat outside with a gun outside of a former um, financial investment manager's house or apartment or something um, with a gun in his car waiting for him to come out to kill him. He was contemplating murder. Murder, y'all, murder. Oh, man, they built a lot of money out of him. They took his whole, I mean, when I tell you this man is in a two-bedroom apartment in Virginia, they reported. I don't know, maybe it's a lavish two-bedroom apartment, but I know me and Suge aren't in a two-bedroom apartment. They stole from his mama. Yes, 500K. So, shout out to Clinton Portis. Hopefully, he can get part of this, you know, whole dementia slash concussion lawsuit from the NFL and hopefully get him a little bit more money. But um, that was one story that I was not ready for. I didn't totally, not even totally get it. So, whew, Lord. Anyways, we're getting um, outside of the box here. Please hang on a second. Check out the commercial from my personal trainer, Mr. Mike. And... Um, Listen as we come back with the girls from Minorities in Sports. Yo, what's good with it? It's Mr. Mike T, owner and founder of Naked Athletics Fitness Co. You say naked, I say why not? We going for muscle tone, muscle gains, diet plans, nutrition plans, any and everything to get you where you want to go physically and mentally. You can look us up at nakedathleticfitness.com or you can reach me personally at 929-8791 or you can follow me. That's on IG at Naked Athletics with an X, not a C, underscore fitness team. Or even Facebook at M-Z-S-T-A-M-Y-K. And that's Mr. Mike. So contact me today so we can get you going. And remember, nobody stops you but you. And once again, that's 702-929-8791 or NakedAthleticsFitness.com. Contact me today. Let's get you going. Nobody stops you but you. NTZ, in the zone, city to city, state to state, worldwide. This is the In the Zone Network. This is hey, welcome back to Girls Chat Sports. We are now joined with two lovely ladies. We've got Miss Shina Wheel and Candace Haynes um, current from Minorities in Sports. Hi, ladies. Welcome to Girls Chat Sports. Hi, how are you? Good, thank you. Um, so real quick, if you can kind of just tell our listeners, I mean, I've been watching a lot of the stuff that you guys have been posting on Instagram, um, but as far as uh, minorities in sports, tell us a little something about the company, about the business, kind of what got you guys there, what made you guys start this, and um, what you guys are doing, what kind of projects you have. Um, I can start, and then Candace can finish off. So we literally started as a group chat about a year ago, um, February 2016, with a few people in a group me group chat to um, just share resources in the sports industry. We saw that there was a need for a community for people of color, and it was really just for us to get. I'm sorry, this is my dog. <laughs> it's okay. it really for us to just get together to just share resources, or if we had um, projects that we were working on to help each other with that, or we saw jobs to just throw that in the group. Um, and then just work from there. And over the years, people just kept adding people. And we ended up getting about 500 members now um, in the group chat where we share resources. We are a community. And it's a really, really awesome space. So we're continuing to grow. And I'll let Candace take it from here. Yeah, I mean, like Shannon said, uh, it, it's really an organic uh, growth that, that we've been experiencing, um, you know, it's it's one person like, hey, you know, I know five other people that I think would be great to join this group, and, you know, I feel like uh, we're pretty much the six degrees of separation from anyone in the sports industry. Wow. Um, 
we have people from, and, and the thing I really enjoy about it is that it's not just a group that's for people who are working in pro sports, mm-hmm. but people who are working in marketing. It's basically every avenue of the sports industry that you can think of. So you have people like me who work in nonprofit and, and, and the community side of sports. You mm-hmm. have people who work in collegiate athletics, people who work directly with athletes, you know, people who work on the branding side. So I think that it's, it's, a, it's become a, a very valuable resource for a lot of people. Um, and that's basically what we wanted it to be when, when we, you know, decided to start the group. Wow, that's... And if I could tell a quick story real quick, when Candace says we are pretty much a degree of separation from anyone in the industry, we can't stress how true that is. Um, for a quick example, my sister, who is in school at the moment, one of her classmates is doing their dissertation on Roberto Clemente as well as other black athletes from Puerto Rico. Wow. Uh, if you are familiar with Roberto Clemente, you know that he's been gone for a while. Um, so she needed someone to get in touch with his estate. And my sister was like, I'm just going to ask you. And I'm like, that's a long shot. There is no way anybody in the group knows anyone in his estate. <laughs> Literally within a few hours, I had an email address to his son. Wow. Son. And I was able to pass it on to my sister and her colleague. And now we're getting a shout out in some of this dissertation. So oh, my God. Really, really connected. And one thing that I can't stress enough is the group is really just passionate about helping each other. And I think that's what makes us so great is that we it's, it's not a competition. Everyone is willing to help each other. Everyone wants to help the next person get to that next step. So it's, it's really an awesome That thing. is so key, especially in an industry like this, and especially as even minorities and or women, too. I'm sure there's more than just women in your guys's, um, your group, but it's very hard as a woman to be in any kind of realm in regards to sports and having to compete against the men that have been there for so long and doing the same thing. So, wow, that's really amazing to have a great support group like that. Definitely. Thank you. How easy or difficult is it to work together with everybody all over the place in different states and whatnot to kind of collaborate? Is the group chat pretty helpful in staying in touch? Yeah, and I think that's um, what makes us different than some other organizations that do similar things is that um, we felt it was important to keep the group chat. So right now the group chat is split up into two groups. We have one group, which is for posting opportunities only and searching for opportunities. So if you're looking for a job, or you're working on a project and you need an athlete or someone in the industry to, you know, help you with that project, that group is only for that. And then we have another group, which is just for conversations, everyday camaraderie, chats. And we felt it was important to keep that so people could stay in contact. It's not like, oh, yeah, I met this one guy who used to work for Nike (laughs) two years ago at Conference X. Let me see if I can find his business card somewhere in one of my old bags. Like people are connected 24 seven. Wow. That is so cool. So I guess what I guess started, were you guys, you know, in sports yourselves? What was your passion with sports? What brought you to even start this kind of group in regards to like the, the, you know, the front and the back end of the kind of sports industry? Well, we've known each other other for life science for about six years. Um, we actually went to grad school together at Columbia in their sports management program. Uh, and we just, you know, we stayed in touch. And, uh, you know, every time one of us would have an idea for something or be working on something, we would, you know, contact the other and, and just, you know, just, just bounce ideas off of each other. And I think that we both realized that uh, we – had resources to share with each other. Mm -hmm. So that kind of, you know, blossomed into what MIS has become. Um, But I know for me, just in terms of my passion for sports, it's pretty much been my entire life. Um, So, you know, there's there's never been a time where I haven't been a sports fan at the very least. And, you know, obviously being uh, a young woman growing up in New York City, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, basketball was definitely my number one priority Mm -hmm. when I was a a child and a teenager. Um, And so it was just a natural progression, um, having major in sports management in in college and 
you know, having two degrees in sports management now, uh, wow. you know, it was just a natural progression to, I think, to, to develop a group like minorities in sports uh, just because I think it's a resource that I would have loved to have when I was in college back in, you know, 2002 or even when I was getting my master's in, in 2011, uh, just to be able to have people and to have, you know, not even so much the resources, but just the community, you know, yeah. to have people that you can vent to that understand what you're dealing with as either a, a minority in sports or a woman in sports or a young person in sports, uh, you know, just to have people that you can talk to and bounce ideas off of and say, hey, you know, I was dealing with this microaggression in the office today. <laughs> so how do I handle this? <laughs> you do it like office space. And you throw, start, you know, crashing stuff and tossing out printers and fax machines. No. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so it's, it's um, good to have. Shina, what about you? Yeah. And to, yeah, so to piggyback off of what Candace said, we had known each other for about six years. And, um, like she said, we always called each other for a different project. And the interesting thing is we actually wanted to do a conference first that focused on um, just growing diversity in the sports space. And that turned into the group chat first. And like I said, it really started as something small just for a few of us to just hit each other up with resources and just turned into what it is today. But in terms of... Um, what got me into sports, I have been working in sports for the past eight years. I've kind of been like a nomad in the industry, um, working everywhere from ESPN to the team side, to the brand side. It's been a little bit crazy, but um, I've always been a sports fan, just like Candace, mm -hmm. except I was not blessed with hand-eye coordination. <laughs> so um, I got really excited about the business side. And I'm kind of a nerd, too, because I've always realized that sports is the one industry that always makes money. And right. I like money, and money intrigues me. So um, in high school, I remember this professor was saying, like, oh, all teams need a psychiatrist. And I was like, oh, Dang. I like psychology. It's kind of cool. <laughs> I can work on the sports side, make money, hang out with some athletes, get them in the right mind. Um, so I did a psychology program at Penn State for undergrad. Um, and interestingly enough, Penn State does not have a sports management program, huh. and, which is very weird. Um, <laughs> I don't know if they do now, but they definitely did not have one when I was there. Um, so I was like, all right, I'll do psychology. And then I took some neuroscience class, and they made me dissect the human brain. Oh, gosh, that that person no. was a, mm -mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they told me that person was alive two weeks before. So I was like, okay, fuck this. Ooh. Yeah, it was really, it was aggressive. I was like, fuck this. I yeah. am not going into the medical side. I'm going to switch over to this business side. <laughs> that's how I ended up in the industry. And it was my way to still be connected to sports without actually having to physically play. Okay. Um, so, but when it came to my knowledge of sports, one thing that I noticed at a lot of the places that I've worked, um, you know, I won't say any real names, but like the worldwide leader, anyway, <laughs> I was always often the only black person on the team. Okay. Or one of the only women. And it, it's a lot to deal with when you don't have other people that look like you or even come from the same background as you. Because not only was I one of the only people of color, but I was also one of the only, like, middle-class people there. Everybody else had gotten a job because daddy played golf with the CEO. Right. Or, or their dad was the coach, and they just made their way right. in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it yeah. was just really strange because, you know, and that I started working in the industry around the time when a lot of the, you know, police shootings started happening. Um, and to have to go to work to deal with that and not be able to talk to anyone because they either didn't care or just really didn't understand why it was such a big deal <laughs> was a hard thing for me to deal with. So I'm just so grateful. That would drive me crazy. <laughs> oh, let me tell you, when Trayvon Martin happened, I remember one of my coworkers came to me and was like, can you just tell me why... Everyone is, like, making such a big deal about this kid being killed. Really? Don't make it a black-white thing. Just tell me what happened. 
Oh my like, god. Okay. I can't. This is too much. Yeah, that's a big timeout for me because I would have probably been in jail after a few times. But um, yeah. yeah, I can't. You know, and stupidity, I think, is just, you know, people with no common sense just don't get it either. Like, how do you not, even if it was whatever child, I mean, it's a child getting killed, period. Let's just start there. Yeah. But, but it's just really, they're so far removed from it. I mean, I've even had people ask me, you know, what is a college loan? Why didn't your parents just send you to college? Are you serious? And I'm like, okay, my parents cannot write. What can, who can afford a college back. period right now? <laughs> <laughs> I mean. But again, these are the people that I work with. Oh, yeah. See, I would have had a real hard time biting my tongue right. there. Oh, man. Okay. I wish I had that community back then that <sighs> I could just like type angrily and feverishly into a group chat <laughs> as opposed to just like trying not to get arrested in the office. Right. Okay. Well, let's move a little bit to, you know, obviously we want to hear, we definitely want to keep up with you and minorities in sports. We're going to ask you a little bit um, to give us kind of like the information on how to contact you both, but let's switch it up a little bit to sports and what's kind of current right now. I mean, as of this morning, I woke up to my personal favorite coach because I've been a Bulls (laughs) fan since I was a baby. Like, I mean, I was bred, I I was a Bulls fan since Jordan was went to North Carolina. So, I mean, (laughs) I knew that was the case. Phil Jackson, I love you know, the triangle offense. I didn't care for him at the Lakers. So I'm a Laker and hater since birth as well. Laker fan here. <laughs> and Steph's a Laker fan. So how, and how we get along, who knows? But, um, so Phil Jackson gets, I guess, separated is the, the technical term they want to use <laughs> from the Knicks. What's your guys' take on that? It's a great thing. <laughs> <laughs> and Candace, tell us about ending your 29 year relationship with the Knicks. Is it back? Are you so, back? <laughs> I'm I'm not I'm not back just yet. I'm kind of like the the checking my ex on Facebook. Right. Now. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm, I'm just like she's got a new girlfriend yet. Right. <laughs> Secret stalking on the side, just seeing what they're up yeah. to. Right. Right. Okay. <laughs> uh, but I I had to end my my relationship with Nish because it was unhealthy. <laughs> um, it's just you know I I actually a lot of people think that I became a Knicks fan because they're the New York Knicks, Mm -hmm. but I actually was walking past the television one day when I was like two or three years old, and they had orange on their court, and orange is my favorite color, so I became a Knicks fan. Really? (laughs) Yeah. And so, and and it was funny because at first I thought they were the Mets, and my mom was like, no, this is basketball. I was like, oh, okay. And so, you know, I became a Knicks fan, and I, it just stuck from, from that day on. And, you know, every every night during the season at 7 o'clock, I'd be watching the pregame show. And, wow. And you know, I would listen to the games in the car with my dad if we were out somewhere. And, nice. And, you know, it was like Knicks were, like, a major part of my life. And then when I went away to school, I went to – when I came to VCU – People were like, why are you a Knicks fan? <laughs> I'm like, like, because. And so, but this was like 2002, so they weren't really trash just yet. Just yet. <laughs> so, you know, so I thought, you know, when we went through like the Scott Layton era, I was like, oh my gosh, it can't get any worse than this. And then we went through the Isaiah Thomas era, and I was like, oh, it can't get any worse than this. Yeah. <laughs> and now, you know, with Phil, it's like, we got Oakley fighting in the stands. Like, <laughs> Oh gosh! And it's just like, it's like at any point in a relationship where you're just like, listen, like you're just going through the list of transgressions, <laughs> and you're like, how did I put up with all of this for this long? Like sexual harassment, and buying out players, and signing players who have bad backs. Right. And giving Jerome James $50 million. <laughs> <laughs> the Lala and the Mellow breakup. Oh my god. <laughs> It's like, at what point do you say, okay, enough is enough? And pressing charges against Charles Oakley was my breaking point. And so I was like, you know, I'm going to take a step back. You know, the Knicks are not even worth watching on television. I don't know why we even discussed the Knicks. (laughs) But because if they were not the Knicks, they would just be any other irrelevant team. So it's just, I can't, I can't deal with it. But waking up this morning... And hearing the news that Phil was gone, I mean, it was it was beautiful because this is a guy who's trying to trade the one asset that we have. Right. Like, right. And you know, buying out Melo, 
you guys, both of you signed the contract. Mm-hmm. Melo knew who the Knicks were when he signed with the Knicks. The Knicks knew who Melo was when they signed Melo. So I don't understand this desire to just buy a guy out and let him go somewhere and win a championship or lose in the finals to the Warriors. <laughs> so at some point we have to start to function as a regular basketball team and not have all of these sideshows going on. And, you know, you got an owner who's like, I'm not going to watch the draft. I'm going to go perform with my terrible blues band. <laughs> <laughs> we can feel the passion in your voice right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, the trajectory of the Knicks downfall is in direct, uh, it directly corresponds with when James Dolan and Cablevision became the primary owners of the Knicks. So it's just at some point, firing Phil is great, but the fish rots in the head. And unless you're firing Dolan, which you can't, because <laughs> this team is never going to accomplish what it could accomplish given the market and the history and the cachet that the franchise should have. Right. There's still a lot of room to go. That's for sure. <laughs> Oh, but hey, at yeah. least you still got a team. My Sonics have been gone since 08, so what can I do, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, you have the Seattle Storm. You can root for the WNBA squad at least. I mean, but now we're, you know, they were doing great, but now they're like second to last. Like, what are we doing? I don't know. It's, you know, it's, I I, it's like, yeah, yeah, I yeah. I feel like the sports gods are just trolling everybody. Man, <laughs> it man, make man. Sense. As a Laker fan, <laughs> I understand. <laughs> Listen, and like, Phil Jackson is making it so hard for me to cape for him. Like, I am trying to support him through thick and thin, and he's making it impossible. At mm. this point, I just got to be that person and just kind of, like, stays out the hashtag, goes in my little corner, and just stays quiet because it's just too much. He should have came back to the Lakers. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. I mean, I think he needs but, to just go home. And right. Like, Get some rest. Right. Get some rest. Yeah, just, be like every other retired guy. Like, get a hobby, vlog, do whatever you feel like doing, talk shit, nap. It's like, right. Nap. <laughs> you know? Hey. Have a glass of whiskey. <laughs> Just like, chill. Smoke it's a hot. cigar, chill out, you know, get it all in. Um, so, and then, so switching real quick over to I know um Shina you were over at the big three we got to see the guys here when they were in the draft it sounds like you know both Candace and you are of our same age range where those guys were around kind of like in the best times of basketball you know how was it seeing some of those guys on court you know AI there was Abdul um Abdur, I mean, there was just, I mean, there was guys on there that you hadn't seen play for. I mean, Rashard Lewis was doing great. I love that they had the jerseys. They called, it was Sweet Lou was on his jersey, and they had white chocolate on Jason Williams' jersey. I mean, those are just, it was awesome to see that kind of stuff. What did you guys think? Of, what did you think of it live? <laughs> I really wanted this to be great. <laughs> Me too. I, I really did, and I was just like, you know, it would be awesome if this wasn't something that they were taking so serious. Like, let's not make this into a real league. Let's go, like, the Harlem Globetrotters route and just make it into some fun little pickup game. They were getting serious. The there summer. was, like, some serious right. fouling and, going on. And fighting. And then it's like, you get hyped. You're like, oh, AI is about to be back on the court. But then you're like, and then he's no, not. This is really like my 50 year old uncle who was like a college ball star. <laughs> you can't let that go. I'm and afraid they're all going like, to get injured and not like make it to right. the championship. <laughs> and it was just like, I will say this. I think everyone that I asked who was at the game, what their opinion was, everyone was like, I just like I actually haven't been paying attention oh. because it was that slow that it's like you were really trying to watch and you were really trying to be into it. Uh-huh. But it was just like so slow. Um, also, I think because they were filming it for broadcast because it wasn't live, which is dumb on a, a whole other That's level. really that ridiculous. Watch, yeah, that was too much. Too much. And as, it's like at this point, you're trying to get to the level where ESPN is like at least try. Like, well, that's Fox Sports these, for you. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it was just ridiculous. So 
So they kept stopping it to broadcast. Um, they announced the players twice. No they way. For an arena oh. and then they announced it for the games. They were just like these really long pauses. And then on top of that, like no three on three games should be an hour. No, at all. Well, you know, what's funny is I, I actually had to watch it on, you know, I watched it on TV. I hadn't really mm-hmm. been on social media the whole day Sunday, so I didn't want to know what was going on. I watched it, and it was crazy because I saw that my recording was three hours, but yet there was, yeah. there was like, six games. And I'm like, wait, how do you do? And then the first two games go, and it was two hours. I'm like, how do they fit the rest of these games? And they literally, Allen Iverson's game was literally, like, maybe ten minutes of the entire That's show. Cool. And then they would yep. sh- I was like, wait a minute. I I don't want to, you know, I mean, granted, his was the only game that wasn't close like the other ones, but still I was like, wait a minute. That don't make no sense. And then, like, from a marketing perspective, you know everyone is here to watch Elmer. Hello. You look at that list of players. Everyone here is here to watch AI. You heard it in the arena. As soon as they called his name, they were chanting his name. Every time he wasn't in the game, they were like, bring back AI. It was ridiculous. Nine minutes. All the way at the end. And then it was just like a full day affair of like this Ugh. super cool basketball. I well, I hope they get it together for future shows. I'm planning on being at the playoffs, hopefully in Seattle. So um, there's I a huge. I'm just hoping that it gets it. That. I'm just hoping. I hope you get some comp tickets. <laughs> I'm just hoping. I'm just hoping that it's more. You know that they've worked out the kinks. You know, and <laughs> and that people are still around and not injured by that time. Three people. Well, out. that's a big thing. First game. Three people. Like, you know, like when Bad Boy went on tour. Yeah. Right? The Rough Riders reunion happened, and everybody was like, "I don't know, if they're gonna make it all the way to September." Man, <laughs> their tickets are on Groupon right now, and <laughs> I even passed on that so far. So I'm just, you know, I went to the original. Yeah. I don't think they can outdo the original right now, but that's beside I the point. That <laughs> I went out for that press pass. Right, right, right. Well, ladies, I, we, we're kind of overextending ourselves today, but we we've really enjoyed talking to you guys. I mean. We definitely want to keep up with you. We want to hear more from you, maybe towards when um, we usually do a little bit more podcasting towards the um, football season because those are our two favorite sports. We want to touch base with you, kind of talk to you maybe about your Giants and um, how they're doing um, and kind of what else is going on with minorities in sports. But please let our listeners know how they can reach you, where they can find you at as far as Instagram, Twitter, if there's an email address, that kind of thing. Well, first, please talk to us about the Giants before week five. <laughs> usually when things start to shift. Um, we're always cool in the beginning of the season, so we'll be a happier bunch. Before we As a Cowboys we fan, Aww. I'm happy about that. <laughs> Ignore that. We don't we don't talk Cowboys over here at yeah. all. Yeah, I don't know. What talk Cowboys. Cowboys. I don't, I don't even know what that is. Yeah, no. So. Um, go, yeah, no, where can we reach you? Where can people find you, Instagram, Twitter, uh, contact you vers- on email, that kind of thing? Uh, we are MI Sports This. Oh, go ahead, Candace. No, no, you go ahead. <laughs> All right. <laughs> We're MI Sports This everywhere, pretty much on Twitter, Instagram. Um, if you search for us on Facebook, you'll find us that way as well. Um, so that's MI, like minorities in sports. Biz, B-I-Z. Um, you can find us there. We like to feature our members so you can see all the cool things that our members are doing, um, the events that they're going to, the great things that they're actually working on. Um, and in terms of emailing us, you can email us at members at misportsbiz.com. Cool. Did I leave anything out, Candace? No, I think you hit everything. <laughs> right on. All right. <laughs> thanks you guys so much we know you um we know you took some time out we know it's a little late over there on the east coast so thank you so much we definitely will be in touch um we'd love to have you guys back on and um we'll talk to you later thank you so much we really appreciate it once again, a big thank you, thank you to the girls and the women from Minorities in Sports, Miss Shina and um, Candace. We really appreciate it. We'll talk to them again soon. Um, other than that, we're almost done, right? Yeah. Hey, we got a special day coming up. I hear it's your birthday Aww, on Friday. It's my birthday. It's my birthday. Yeah, so... 
It's a big birthday. It's like 23 plus some extra, you know, no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> What's the plan? What are you doing? I'm going to be hanging out here. We'll be over at Neo Souls um, Taboo Summer Nights Pool Party at the Orleans Thursday. If anybody's in town, feel free to stop by, say hi, and take a dip with me. Um, and then I'll be kind of lounging around Vegas and, you know, having a little staycation. I like it. I like what about it. you? You got some plans. Oh, I am getting out of this heat and I'm going to Chicago. Can you go see my baby, Michael? <laughs> go see his statue and yeah, just like go hug it on his for door. me. Just go hug <laughs> When I saw him, he wasn't fully placed in his permanent spot yet when I was there last, just, but now he's back in his permanent spot. And you can just tell him I'll be back there one day soon to give him hugs and love. I am going to hit up a White Sox game. I would like to see the Cubs, but well, it just fun. didn't happen. We can't wait to see the some stuff on um, – make sure you follow us, first of all, guys, on Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, Facebook, at Girl Chat Sports. You'll be able to catch, hopefully, some White Sox action while Steph's in yeah, Chicago. Yeah, I will be going live um, on all of our social media, so follow us. And where can they find you? Uh, me specifically, uh, S underscore wash. Wonderful. And you can also find me at Seattle, the number four underscore life. Seattle for life. Thanks for listening, you guys. And we will see you again in a couple weeks. Bye. Thanks for checking out another great episode of Girl Chat Sports. And remember, we don't have balls, but we know how to cover them. Until next time, guys. <laughs>